We spent unit four talking about how do we write the equation of a line and what is special about a line and what are those unique characteristics dealing with slope. And then we ended unit four talking about what happens if two lines are parallel or two lines are perpendicular. And what unit five is really going to explore is just the idea of having two lines in the same plane or on the same graph and what can happen if we have two lines on the same graph. So we're gonna spend some time focusing on how to solve a system, which is what that is. A system is when we have two or more equations and two or more variables. So we're gonna focus on graphing today in 5.2. We're gonna focus on substitution in 5.3. We're gonna focus on elimination and really tying together how do we solve or what do we do if we have two linear situations at the same time. So our essential question, how do we solve linear systems by graphing? So as I just said, a system of linear equations is a set of two or more linear equations, meaning two or more lines. In Algebra 1, we really just focus on two lines. In Algebra 2, you may focus on three variables, four variables, etc. A solution of a system of equations in two variables is an ordered pair that satisfies each equation in the system. On a graph, it's the point where the two lines cross. So we're saying if I have one line and another line and they're both on the same graph, where do they cross? That place where they cross is the solution to the system. And the next three sections are going to focus on different ways to solve that. So even if we're not graphing, we're still talking about where do these two lines cross on a graph. So what would this look like? There's a couple of things that can happen. The first thing is that we could have two lines and they could cross at exactly one point. This point would be our solution. And we would write that solution as an ordered pair. Every once in a while, we get two equations that don't look the same, but we, when we end up solving, they actually end up being exactly the same line, which means that there are infinitely many solutions and every point on the line is a solution. The last thing that could happen, which we explored in Unit 4, was we could actually have two lines that never cross because they are parallel. And that would mean that there is no real solution because they never cross. So two lines can either cross exactly once, they can cross everywhere because they're actually just the exact same line, or they can never cross because they're parallel. Those are the three options that we have here. So how do we check if a point is a solution? So if a point is a solution to a linear system, what does that mean? That means that when you plug that point in to both equations, you end up with a true statement. So again, when you plug the point into both equations, you end up with a true statement. And why do you end up with a true statement? Because that point is on both lines. So if you're checking, is a point a solution to a system, you're gonna plug it into the first line. If that works, then you're gonna plug it into the second line. If it doesn't work when you plug it into the first line, there's no point in checking the second line because it has to work for both. That's the key word there, it has to work for both. And how do we identify a solution from a graph? Well, we look at the graph and we identify that point or the coordinates of the point where the two lines cross. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get into some examples where we're looking at a graph and identifying the solution where we're checking to see if an ordered pair is a solution. And then the last thing we're gonna do in this lesson is we're actually going to solve a system by graphing and start that process just like we did in unit four, but do it twice, graph the first line, graph the second line, and then identify that solution. So let's go ahead and get into some examples. Number one, use the graph to find the solution to the system. So I'm looking at the graph. I'm identifying the point where both lines cross. That point is right here. And then I am identifying the coordinates of where they cross. So that looks like on the x-axis, that looks like negative one. On the y-axis, that looks like positive three. So the solution to the system is negative one, positive three. It's kind of nice when they do all the graphing for you. For number two and three, we're gonna identify if an ordered pair is a solution to the system. So to do that, I'm gonna take this ordered pair and I'm gonna plug it in for x and y in the first equation. 
So 3 times 5 minus 2 equals 13. I'm going to put a little question mark here because I don't actually know if this is true or not yet. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 2 does equal 13. So, so far, so good. It does work in the first equation. Now, remember, it has to work in both. If it doesn't work in the first equation, I'm going to say nope, and I'm going to stop working and not do the extra work here. But if it does, I have to check the second equation. So 2 fifths times the same x value of 5 minus the same y value of 2 equals 0. 2 fifths times 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So this is going to give me 2 minus 2, which is 0. So number 2, the answer is yes. This is a solution to the system. All right, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try the same setup on number 3. Plug in the point negative 2, 2 to the first equation or the second equation. It has to work in both. So if it doesn't work in the first equation you try, the answer is no and you can stop. Okay, I'm going to plug this into the first equation. Negative 2 plus 3 times 2 equals 4. That's what we're checking. This is negative 2 plus 6. This is equal to 4. So, so far, so good. I'm going to check the second equation. So, the opposite of negative 2 plus 2 equals 2. This is 2 plus 2. This does not equal 2. So the answer for number 3 is no. This point is not a solution to the system because it doesn't work in both equations. It has to be a point that's on both lines, which means it has to work in both equations, and it doesn't work in the second equation, so the answer is no. Okay, for 4 and 5, we're going to graph and then solve. So remember to graph a line... And these are nicely in slope-intercept form. To graph a line in slope-intercept form, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my slope as my rise over my run. And I'm going to identify my y-intercept as a point on the y-axis. So I'm going to plot the point 0, 1. And I'm going to use my, sorry, 0, negative 1. And I'm going to use my slope up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And then to the best of my ability, I'm going to connect this using a straight line. All right, for the second equation, y equals 3x minus 2. My slope is 3, so my rise is 3, and my run is 1, and my y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So I'm going to plot that y-intercept. I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1, up 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1, and I'm going to connect the dots. And remember, I can't adjust the thickness on this pen here, so... I have to be careful when I'm identifying where these two lines cross. Remember, they can only cross exactly once. And even though my graph looks <laughs> a little rough here, I can tell the very first thing I did was go up three and write one. And that point right there looks to be my solution. And the coordinates of that point are one, one. And because I'm graphing this on an iPad screen, I'm doubting myself a little bit. So how could I check and make sure that this answer is accurate? Well, I could plug the point in. If I plug the point into this first equation, 1 equals 2 minus 1, that's true. 2 minus 1 is 1. If I plug it into the second equation, 1 equals 3 minus 2, that's true. Okay, so I feel a little better now. Even though my graph isn't great, I feel better because this point is definitely on both lines, which means it is the point where they intersect. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and graph the first line in number 5 and then unpause the video and see how you did. So y equals x, my slope is 1, so up 1, right 1, and my y-intercept is 0 because there is no number in the plus b spot. So I'm going to start at 0, 0. I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and I'm going to actually just keep going the other direction with that pattern to make sure this line takes up the whole space of the graph because I don't know where the other line is going to cross. All right, how did you do? Does your line look like my line? Hopefully a little bit better if you're doing this on paper. All right, go ahead and pause the video and graph the second line. So for my second line, my slope is negative 1, so down 1, right 1, and my y-intercept is the point 0, negative 2. Down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. And then I'm going to keep going up and left until I get to where they cross. And I just found it, but I'm going to keep going to try and make this line straight. 
and the point where they cross is right here at negative one, negative one. And again, I wanna double check that to make sure I'm right. Well, X and Y have to be the same in the purple line. That's true, they are both negative one. Negative one does equal negative one. In the second equation, does negative one equal the opposite of negative one? Minus two, one minus two, that one works as well. So I feel very confident now that my solution is the point negative one, negative one. Now I also wanna remind you, one of the beautiful things about this unit is that most of the time you can just plug in your answer and actually check and make sure that it's right. And I just did that two times on both of these problems, which makes me feel much more confident when I'm submitting my answers that I know I checked to make sure that the math is correct. Okay, the last problem. Wolverine and Superman are reading the same book. Wolverine is on page 14 and reads two pages every night. So let's go ahead and set up an equation that represents Wolverine. He's on page 14, so that's where he's starting. And remember when we graph, we start at our y-intercept. So that must be my y-intercept. And he reads two pages every night. That's his rate of change, that's his slope. So there's gonna be my y equals two x plus 14. I should have done Superman in red. Oh well, we'll do Superman in blue. Superman, is on page six, so he's starting at page six, that's his y-intercept, and he reads three pages every night. That's his rate of change, which is his slope. Create a system that would help you determine when they have read the same number of pages. So this does not say to solve, it just says to set it up. So here's one equation, and here's the other equation. Whoops. So, key things from this section. In order to check if an ordered pair is a solution, Plug it in and see if it works in both lines. In order to identify if or what the point of a solution is from a graph, look and see where they intersect, or which we had to do on the last two problems, graph them and then identify where they intersect. And remember, when we're talking about two lines in the same plane, they either cross exactly once, everywhere, which means every point on the line is the solution, or they never cross because they're parallel. Looking forward to supporting you with this in class. Thanks for listening.